Hello, I'm just trying to fiddle with uh, Facebook Live in this case. And work out what I'm doing. Facebook. I will try to share this somehow. Well, I can see myself now on the computer. Although with a massive delay. Fly, be or whatever you are. <sighs> Where is this? Where is the share button? Or oh, isn't there one? Share video. You are copy. waiting for people to come on hopefully they invite themselves it's really weird seeing that there's such a long delay though can whoever's watching uh, please comment if you can hear me or if it's too loud or too quiet or whatever Testing, one, two, three. Can I see who's on mine? Where are Cool, thanks Trevor. How do I invite people to the video? Oh, so it pops up here. Okay then. Share to group. Post to the page. That's kind of silly. Well, I'll post it to myself like that. That's all that one. Share. How are you all doing? I don't know if people are going to come online, but that's fine. I guess the video just saves itself at the end. So I'm RJ Martin, for those of you that don't know, and I guess I'll call this Tinler episode uh, 14, I think I'm up to. And I'll just have a verbal disclaimer that none of this is legal advice, that everything expressed in it is my own opinion blah 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 I just have to have that for legal reasons and I'll try and keep that open so I can see the comments better so what this video is about is the illegality of the lockdown of uh, closed borders obstacles to borders checkpoints uh, for this is for internal borders and Hi Lee, uh, turns out you've got a button to wave at people, uh, pop up. Anyway, so 
really the government is breaking a law, both uh, state and federal, and of course local governments, so-called, uh, or they're really called councils, are really just part of state governments uh, under the current legal framework. Uh, even though you know people can say they're unconstitutional or whatever, that's how they get around it because basically, uh, you know, say Gold Coast City Council is basically a department of uh, you know the Queensland government, that kind of thing. But uh, in relation to uh, border checkpoints and obstacles at borders, uh, it is uh, really completely illegal for the internal borders. Uh, it is not a part of a genuine quarantine that is uh, reasonably proportionate and uh, whatever and reasonable uh, to do uh, for people that haven't been diagnosed with this COVID-19, uh, which is coronavirus uh, disease 2019. Uh, for some reason a lot of people think it's a 19th strain. Uh, that's not correct. The proper name for the uh, virus is SARS, as in Sudden Acute Respiratory Syndrome, Coronavirus, or CO, uh, then a big V, uh, dash two. So SARS, dash C, little o, big V, dash two, uh, and anyway. So, I'm getting some comments now. Thank you. Uh, Hi Trevor, Lee, Nick and Luke. And I've got the wave button again for one person. I don't know why it doesn't apply to everyone. And anyway, so for one, the virus isn't as bad as people make out. Uh, that uh, has been shown, including by, since I've got my laptop here, I can look up people's names properly. Uh, I think it's Professor Riccardi. Uh, Ricky, Ardy, no. Walter, no. Do, 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 do. But anyway, uh, I won't try and do two things at once because otherwise I'll uh, confuse myself and people can verify this information and it is so-called off-the-cuff information because I can't really use a computer and this phone at the same time. So uh, the gentleman in charge of uh, Italy's health system is Professor Ricciardi, some name like that. Uh, he has stated publicly that only 12% of the uh, deaths attributed to uh, the coronavirus, this novel new coronavirus, uh, and I'll explain why I say it like that in a second. Uh, so only 12% of the deaths attributed to the coronavirus are actually uh, causally linked, which doesn't even mean that uh, it was caused by. It just means that 88% of the claimed uh, coronavirus deaths aren't really from that whatsoever. Sorry about the phone call. Yeah, so apparently a few doctors are saying it's oxygen deprivation. Uh, of course, with the virus, it actually makes certain symptoms, one of which is uh, pneumonia for some people, uh, which officially it is, I think, 5% of people are hospitalised and half of those people uh, officially, uh, roughly, die of the illness, so about 2 to 2.5%. Uh, but then, you know, deaths can be attributed to many things. Is it uh, the pneumonia that killed them? Is it the virus that killed them or whatever? Uh, and going back to what uh, the Italian professor said, who's in charge of the Italian healthcare system, that only 12% uh, have a causal connection to the virus. Uh, there are things called comorbidities and um, I even had a chat to some senior medical uh, people yesterday, which uh, I won't name who they are, uh, but located uh, within uh, two major hospitals in Australia, and I found out some interesting things from that uh, those people. So one was directly uh, talking to me, one indirectly, uh, whatever that means. But anyway, so. Uh, with comorbidities, it's like, say as an example, if someone goes to a hospital having a heart attack 
and then they die of a heart attack which wasn't caused by the virus and they're tested and they have the virus and it can be attributed falsely uh, and incorrectly to the virus actually killing them when it's not really the virus killing them because they're going to have a heart attack anyway and it's just that they happen to have the virus. There's also a lot of people that state that uh, the test for coronavirus, uh, as in SARS-CoV-2, uh, is, uh, well, there's even mainstream media uh, that says that it's flawed with uh, up to 80% false positives. But another problem is that, uh, ignored, so life insurance payments can be skirted. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, Nick just uh, said that comorbidity uh, is being ignored so that life insurance payments can be skirted, uh, which may or may not be the case. But anyway, so what was I saying? Sorry it's taken so long too. I was also trying to uh, work out how to broadcast simultaneously to Facebook Live and YouTube Live. And I went on Facebook and it seemed like no one was uh, going on there. Uh, etc. But anyway, so a couple of things are that the test doesn't actually test for the specific strain of, let's just call it Wuhan coronavirus. Uh, it tests for all coronaviruses and there are hundreds of coronaviruses and uh, traditionally it makes up about 15 to 25 percent of all uh, head colds or colds. Uh, so, you know, someone might have coronavirus strain A, it's not really called A, but I'm just making an example. Another person might have B, or number 175, etc. But anyway, the point of this video, uh, besides uh, obviously the coronavirus isn't as bad as it's made out to be, uh, I may as well uh, say about the uh, medical staff as well, uh, a couple of interesting points. So currently, uh, and I'm generalising the information based on the specific information I have, and again, you know, keeping people anonymous, uh, no identifying features, etc. But uh, the hospitals are currently uh, at half capacity and getting half the patients that they normally uh, receive day to day. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have seen the videos where people are going past hospitals and uh, up to hospitals, you know, filming through emergency room windows, that kind of thing, uh, where there's nearly no patients. And anyway, with the lockdown, uh, there have been uh, basically postponements of elective surgeries. Uh, that kind of thing, so they don't even get the normal traffic through the hospitals. Uh, half the staff have been told that uh, they are to uh, take their annual leave and it's done on a day-to-day -day basis just in case there is actually a real outbreak. Uh, the, one of the people have stated that there is only one person in the hospital on uh, or in the ICU, whatever, I guess they're probably all in ICU if they're on ventilation, but one person, uh, plus or minus one, just in case there's only one hospital that has, you know, a certain number of people on ventilators, uh, but let's just call it one person on a ventilator in the whole hospital, and that person was unaware of if it was actually for COVID-19, uh, which is coronavirus disease 2019, as I said. And apparently when they get their patients and they have uh, symptoms of uh, flu, uh, they get two nasal swabs uh, done, one test for flu and one test for coronavirus. Then uh, not sure if it's actually testing for the specific strain. Uh, there's also certain forms to do, uh, yep, yeah, uh, empty emergency wards, indeed. And also a lot of people, because they are staying home, aren't getting normal injuries. Like, you know, a lot of tradies won't be doing their work at the moment, uh, even though they might well be deemed essential services, but you know, then they don't get a, a ram set nail gun 
nail through their hand or something to go to the hospitals. So I'm just reading some comments. Can I scroll? I can scroll. Yeah, so uh, obviously, uh, and the medical uh, people I've spoken to basically said that something fishy is going on and that, uh, and discussions back and forth that, you know, we don't know what the reason for this distraction is and this, uh, what do you call that, diversion basically, that obviously something's happening in the background. Is it something good? Is it something bad? Is it know really uh, like QAnon says and mass arrests are going to happen uh, or not is it that we're preparing for war with someone or not is it uh, just you know people are doing a power grab taking over stock markets by crashing them uh, that kind of thing uh, I don't know I'm sure most people don't know unless they're one of the decision makers uh, you know, implementing this thing. There's also been a lot of videos uh, from mainstream media where, say, CNN, as an example, was passing off footage from an Italian hospital uh, that was taken days before as being a New York hospital, and they got caught out for that and then uh, issued some kind of apology or admission that, oh no, we made a mistake, that kind of thing. Indeed, to collapse the economy. So, uh, someone, how can I put it? So there's an alleged example from the past, and with this uh, incident that happened in the past, uh, allegedly, uh, it's back in the Napoleonic era, and you yeah, had the big battle of Waterloo, and supposedly using carrier pigeons, the Rothschild family uh, received a message back in England that. Uh, Napoleon won and they started a false uh, psychological operation, PSYOP, where they started publicly selling all their shares and pretending they were panicking and then that uh, created a crash in the stock market and then they were buying the shares back at pennies in a dollar. So it'd be interesting to find out who is profiteering and going to profit that way, this way or this time I should say, is it going to be George Soros, like when he openly admitted that he uh, crashed the Malaysian economy uh, with the Asian financial crisis in 1997 and basically said, well, uh, they had certain loopholes and features that could have been exploited. If I didn't exploit them, then someone else would have. So, you know, is it Bill Gates? Uh, George Soros, the Rothschild family, especially after one of their branches went broke a couple of years ago uh, with the global financial crisis, uh, that kind of thing. It is an interesting point that Nick is making that uh, telehealth appointments may well absolve doctors of their clinical judgments because you know they can argue in a court if anyone was to sue them, hey look I didn't actually see the patient, we're in a lockdown. That kind of thing. Uh, Kim points out that uh, doctors and nurses didn't even have masks or gloves in an Austin hospital. So I assume that's Austin, Texas. Maybe it's not. Another wave button popped up. So what specifically do you want to talk about if you've got some more questions uh, in relation to that? And also I'll point out that uh, nurses and doctors have been told that if they discuss uh, this COVID-19 anomalies publicly that they will get instantly dismissed, which just shows that something dodgy is happening uh, as well. But if you have a couple of questions, I can answer those. Otherwise, I'll just go into, uh, for instance, why the border uh, checkpoint posts, whatever you want to call them, are illegal. Does seem weird. I think there's probably a 10 or 20 second delay between when I say something and when it actually uh, goes out to everyone. Uh, let's check this quickly.
yep, so something sinister is going on or maybe it's something good that they just need to hide from the public. I don't know. So anyway, I'll get on to the uh, border checkpoints. So uh, section 92 of the Commonwealth Constitution, uh, this is paraphrased, so I can look it up on a computer soon uh, if you want and read it word for word, but it prevents uh, basically interstate uh, border lockdowns uh, as we currently have, the setting up of uh, obstacles to travel. Uh, it uh, goes something like uh, intercourse amongst the states shall be absolutely free, something like that. And then also that was confirmed in the 1988 High Court case, uh, which is colloquially referred to as the Ta Tasmanian Lobsters case or the Crayfish case. A lot of constitutional law cases revolve around food, uh, especially for discrimination between the states. So its proper name is Colin Whitfield and was 1988 and at paragraph 18 it basically confirms again that people are free to travel uh, unmolested by the government, uh, cross borders, through borders, uh, obviously uh, it can be applied intrastate as well. So I'll just quickly, <laughs> childcare is okay but you can't go fishing on your own, that's pretty funny. Uh, apparently they've actually got concrete blockades now. I don't know because I don't have a car that works unfortunately, but I'll quickly look up these uh, section 92 of the constitution and the line from Colin Whitfield. What have you all been up to uh, for the lockout or whatever? Have you been doing anything interesting at home? I've not really done anything. I've only been out probably five times in the last uh, five weeks because I actually uh, caught mumps despite being vaccinated, overly vaccinated against it and it's supposedly been impossible for me to catch and doctors uh, refusing to do mumps tests. Uh, I'm over it now. Uh, but because I was uh, vaccinated against it, then uh, a doctor finally ordered a mumps test and did a trick of checking if I had antibodies for rubella as well to see if I was really vaccinated. And it turns out that, you know, I was. And uh, so, I think gardening. It's good a lot of people are gardening. I hope you actually grow some food to eat. But. I'm very sick of it as well. See, I'm happy if people want to uh, stay home and whatever during the so-called outbreak, that's their prerogative, but it shouldn't be compulsory. We shouldn't have illegal checkpoints, uh, police uh, revenue raising uh, by fining people. There was a dude in Newcastle, 21-year-old man, apparently he was warned twice before, uh, but he got fined $1,000 for sitting down at a park bench and eating a kebab. So, you know, one of the reasons or excuses against the lockdown, even though the law is completely invalid anyway, is uh, for essential things, including food. So if the dude was sitting down eating a kebab, then why the hell was he fined? Indeed, Kim, we are under house arrest. Uh, arbitrarily so too, without a lawful judgment of a judge or really technically you're supposed to have jury trials for every criminal uh, case that we had back in 1828, yet it disappeared with a rewording or a redefining of indictment uh, in the constitution. So. Yeah, and someone's talking about Bunnings as well. Apparently my batteries are going to die soon. Uh, after I was trying to bug around for a couple of hours trying to get this thing to work with uh, simulcasting and all this other stuff. But why the hell are places like Bunnings still open if uh, everywhere else can't be? Or why do Coles Group uh, companies like Kmart uh, have a right to be open when other companies are shut down? 
and also with the supermarkets. I'm sure there's a lot of supermarkets, little ones, that have been shut down directly or indirectly, yet all it does is funnel business to Coles and Woolworths. Well, apparently they're even blocking footpaths for little kitties on their bikes. So anyway, I better get on with this and be quick. So... And I have already annoyed the uh, Australian Federal Police when they had Facebook and Twitter posts about what a good job they're doing basically uh, with these illegal roadblocks. I pointed out the illegality and then some people have been uh, doing funny comments saying uh, well, some have been genuine questions like uh, isn't the constitution suspended when there's an emergency in which case it's not. There is no so-called enabling act in Australia uh, like there was in uh, so-called Nazi Germany and uh, other questions like or well, statements like who cares and look we're all going to die if you don't do that. Another interesting thing pointed out by a senior medical uh, person that I spoke with uh, was about the decline in new cases and the decline in new cases with a two week incubation period for COVID-19 uh, means that we shouldn't have even seen any decline in the number of new cases until you know two weeks after the lockdown and it's only been the ridiculous uh, two people uh, unless it's a one family uh, even uh, two visitors maximum in your house uh, since maybe three days ago or something like that so there shouldn't even be a decrease there should actually be an increase uh, exponentially so of new cases until two weeks later Anyway, so section 92 of the Constitution reads, on the imposition of uniform duties of customs, trade, commerce and intercourse among the states, this is the important part, intercourse as in travel, uh, whether by means of internal carriage or, notion, or, sorry, or ocean navigation, shall be absolutely free. And then it goes on about uh, some uh, exemptions for when the colonies did have protectionism for the constitution to kick in, that kind of thing. And Colin Whitfield at paragraph 18. So this is interpretation by the High Court of that section when I find it. So, uh, paragraph 18, uh, so again that court, court case uh, involved trade but they uh, talked about intercourse uh, for people as well, if that makes sense. So they said the purpose of this section is clear enough to create a free trade area throughout the Commonwealth and to deny to Commonwealth and states alike a power to prevent or obstruct the free movement of people, goods and communications across state boundaries. So like I said that can be uh, if it went to court again which hopefully people stand up and actually have a protest about this uh, that it can be extended uh, within uh, state boundaries or state borders uh, because otherwise it has no meaning basically. And that again confirms that it applies to the states and the Commonwealth. And it's completely illegal. So I'll annoy the police by tagging them in this video as well. Uh, when I publish it, I'll probably do so it starts at this section. But that's just one example. Uh, another point uh, was already made, the computer just died now, uh, that Basically the lockdown is arbitrary home detention, home arrest, house arrest, whatever you call it, uh, without people committing a crime, uh, without it uh, being uh, proportionate or reasonable to the alleged illness. Uh, you know, we had MERS, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, that supposedly off the official figures killed about 32, 33% of people that it infected. I think it uh, infected officially about 800 people. 
Uh, we also had uh, the original SARS, and that was 10%, I think, death rate. And this COVID-19 had officially a death rate, uh, proposed death rate really, of 3%, which turned out to be garbage anyway. If you type in something like uh, world coronavirus infection, something like that, you can clearly see that it's really about 0.5% of the uh, the number of purported cases, but then you combine that with uh, people like the professor who's in charge of the Italian health system, uh, who said that only 12% of the Italian uh, coronavirus deaths could uh, be seen to have a causal relationship to the actual virus, then that is a hell of a lot lower. So it's more like 0.07% or something like that, if you just go off them. There was also a uh, published study that is being criticised, but is it being criticised by people on the gravy train? Maybe, wink, wink. Uh, that stated probably a week ago that already 50% of the UK population has uh, this infection, uh, this virus in their system. So therefore, you know, we're destroying whole economies uh, worldwide, just obviously so someone can buy it up uh, or for some other uh, any, you know, purposes that we're destroying the world basically for not many deaths at all and of course the deaths are very sad and tragic for the few people that are actually dying of it uh, but it also reminds me of a saying about scientists and I was studying science and teaching when I was 17 years old at Newcastle University. I ended up changing to a business degree and then other qualifications since then. So I'm even more relevant to this video, uh, but I'll just shut up about that instead of waffling on for too long. Uh, but there's a story about the scientists that proved that the ocean has no water in it. So there was a scientist and he had this idea and he was going to test if there's actually water in the ocean or if it's just a rumour. So he went into the, you know, some beach somewhere and he walked out along there uh, into the water, uh, or was it water? He picked up a handful of gravel and then he carried it in his hands and then uh, went to his car uh, and then he drove to his lab four hours away in 30 degree heat and then he took the little pebbles that he got from the beach and looked under a microscope and he couldn't see any water so the scientists proved that there was no water in a sea. Uh, also if this video, uh, or if my phone wasn't going to die, then I could have waffled on also about uh, the illegality of compulsory vaccinations, uh, also about a number of dangers that are in vaccinations that aren't uh, acknowledged uh, publicly, uh, but they are known by governments. Uh, for instance, uh, stealth adapted viruses, uh, which are often uh, zoonotic, uh, in other words, from uh, other animals besides humans and transmitted to humans. Uh, an example is simian cytomegalovirus, uh, which has been uh, rebranded as CMV. They leave the S off because simian means monkey uh, or apes. And, uh, you know, we've got simian cytomegalovirus from rhesus monkeys and African green monkeys that are used for uh, growing vaccines. Hello. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, can you just leave me alone? I'm live on the thing. Sorry. Anyway, so uh, simian cytomegalovirus is an example. Uh, there's murine viruses that were discovered only, I think, in 2003, uh, contaminating vaccines uh, and blood supplies, therefore, if people bother to check there. And murine refers to mice. There's also porcine uh, viruses or pig viruses and uh, horse equine viruses. There, 
perhaps the real truth of the so-called Spanish flu wasn't the flu itself, uh, H1N1 flu. Uh, it was a vaccine that was given to US servicemen uh, that was contaminated with uh, bacteria and gave mass pneumonia. Those people were inoculated uh, for World War I and started dropping like flies. But not only that, they were shedding the uh, illness as well. So, uh, you know, was it the virus that killed people or was it the so-called solution to the virus? And I think you'll find that it wasn't the virus itself. Uh, another uh, thing with that quickly, and I can't see... Oh, here we go. Not much better at all. Uh, another issue uh, is in about 1946, I think it was, there was a referendum to insert uh, into the Commonwealth Constitution... Uh, into uh, Section 51, which is the concurrent powers or powers of the states and the uh, Commonwealth. Uh, there was subsection 23A inserted. Uh, that covered a few different topics. Uh, famously, it covered the Commonwealth being able to uh, provide basically social security uh, funding to people uh, because the Commonwealth government was actually illegally doing that beforehand and they had some legislation that was knocked out by the High Court. Uh, so they covered that, but another part that has never been tested by the High Court as to what it even means, uh, a mosquito flying around me, uh, is... Uh, that the government can provide dental and medical services, and then it has in parentheses, uh, so long as it's, uh, what's the actual wording? Mm, but uh, paraphrased is, so long as it uh, doesn't entail any form of civil conscription. And any form means that it's a very broad definition as well. So things like the no jab, no pay, and no jab, no play, no jab, no work even, uh, is also illegal and the government is breaking the law. It's as simple as that. If people want to inject themselves with vaccines, that's uh, their business and they can inject their children with it, even though there's a lot of problems with uh, someone else is pointing out the timerosol, uh, which is ethyl mercury. Uh, in vaccines, which is used as a fungicide. Interestingly enough, it's also uh, used in eye drops, uh, such as, I think it's called Chlorsig, Chlorosig, some name like that. And you're putting mercury straight into your eyeballs, which is stupid. Uh, but anyway, there's a lot of problems with vaccines, uh, and the government does not ever test for stealth-adapted viruses in the vaccines. Uh, they don't bother testing for a lot of things, uh, nor in blood supplies. Uh, we have lots of examples of tainted vaccines. Uh, for instance, a few years ago, uh, when we had, a, I think it was a bird flu, uh, avian bird flu uh, epidemic, uh, even though it wasn't really an epidemic at all, uh, that uh, there was a company called Baxter. They made a vaccine against H1N1 uh, flu virus and their vaccine actually contained live, uh, non-attenuated uh, H1N1 as well as H1N3 uh, flu virus. So they were injecting people with the virus that they were supposedly protecting against by either injecting a, you know, attenuated, half-dead virus, uh, genetically modified to not be... Uh, you know, harmful to your virus, or you can also use little bits of viruses uh, so the body recognises the proteins. There's a lot of mozzies here. And there's also the factor eight and factor nine contamination by, who was that, Bayer, I think, uh, where haemophiliacs were given... Uh, this thing called factor eight and factor nine uh, so that they could avert their blood clotting. Uh, 
uh, haemophilia, of course, uh, affects males, even though females can be carriers, and there is female versions of it, but they're under a different name anyway, uh, where basically your body doesn't uh, clot properly, so you can bleed from you know, a little piece of glass in your foot, something like that. So they were giving uh, these blood products to haemophiliacs that needed it, uh, or needed you know, clotting factors at least, and they were contaminated with HIV. And it was said that in the UK they gave uh, to about 30,000 people and 2,000 people died from the HIV from that, uh, you know, supposedly helpful, helpful therapeutic item. There's also another problem with vaccines in uh, the form of uh, a lack of informed consent as part of uh, medical law, uh, which I have studied at university, uh, you have uh, the concept of fully informed consent. That includes uh, informing people of the uh, potential negative side effects, uh, negative outcomes of taking the medicine or therapeutic item or not taking it, what alternatives there are, etc. That never ever happens and therefore there's never ever informed consent, uh, which is therefore an assault on uh, the person, and also the so-called consent is vitiated because, uh, or doesn't exist, because of the lack of informed consent. So I'll quickly try and look at some comments. Uh, scrolling up, house arrest. Uh, you also can't uh, have people under house arrest uh, without a lawful judgment, really, of their peers, but by a judge as well nowadays. I know you are supposed to have jury trials for uh, everything, as I said. Uh, oh. I wonder if I'm going to get coronavirus from the mosquito that just bit me. Uh, reverse version of... Uh, so, Nick, uh, what are you referring to with the revised version of editions 56.79? Interesting, apparently a doctor's buying protective gear from Bunnings uh, because our stuff was sent to China. There were two uh, property development companies in particular that sent something like 100 tonnes of uh, surgical masks, medical gowns, eye protection, that kind of thing to China. That's public knowledge in mainstream media. And they did that around the world as well, which can well be seen as them trying to make more problems here, that more people would get sick by depriving us of medical supplies. There was also, interestingly enough, uh, in the UK they just discovered that uh, reagents for the COVID-19 uh, test, so chemicals they mixed together, uh, was contaminated with uh, the COVID-19 virus. Uh, it's not really COVID-19 virus, as I said, it's SARS, uh, coronavirus number two, but, you know, just simplifying things. Uh, Diane says you can't even take your kids for driving lessons, which is pretty stupid. It's also like people at the beach and whatever. Uh, you know, aren't they doing exercise when they're swimming at the beach or surfing or uh, riding a bodyboard, boogie board, whatever you want to call it? Uh, really they are. And also uh, a lack of uh, vitamin D uh, makes people sick. You know, vitamin D is very important uh, for fighting illness, including cancer. Uh, I think my phone's about to die. The screen just went dark. Yeah, so again, uh, people talking about 5G, oxygen deprivation, there's a link about uh, the resonance frequency of oxygen being 60 uh, gigahertz, i.e. you can't absorb oxygen properly if it's broadcast at that frequency. Uh, the uh, 5G network uh, uses millimetre waves, which are really uh, used in various weapon systems, including active denial system as an example. Uh, 
uh, and it goes all the way up to 100 gigahertz so that includes the 60 gigahertz magic frequency uh, a bit hard to read the comments when the screen's dark but anyway so what i would like people to do is to basically have a worldwide protest you can do so in uh, various fashions you can write on a bit of paper uh, I, hashtag I do not consent or hashtag no, no in your own language, okay, Finnish A, uh, French non, uh, whatever, German nine. Uh, and then also even within the rules that are invalid and as Justice Latham who was uh, the Chief Justice of the High Court uh, in 1942 said in the first uniform tax case that uh, this is very paraphrased, that a law made in excess of power is no law at all and that people mistakenly think that uh, for a law to be invalid it has to be declared that by a court when that is incorrect, that it was always invalid and people are entitled to disregard it. And thanks for the happy birthday, it's my birthday on the 4th. But anyway, you can still protest within the uh, restrictions that are put in place, uh, if you so desire, and this is not legal advice, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, what's stopping people going out two by two to a park and going on a slippery dip and the swing set, and you have the lawful excuse uh, that, you know, you're getting exercise, you're getting vitamin D, which is a medical treatment, really, uh, if you look at it that way, and if you're playing at the park, if you know the parks are supposedly no-go zone areas, when you're walking to the shops and you're also travelling to the shops and you need to sit down and have a breather. If people stand up to the government, the government may well uh, pull back on these deprivations of liberties and freedoms, uh, which they can't even do, and all of this is not even done under real uh, legislation, it's done under regulation. You have uh, so-called chief medical officers of each state making these ridiculous uh, directions, which they don't even have the power to do, and regulations always have to comply with legislation. Uh, the Enabling Acts, uh, or, you know, if it's called, I'll just make up an uh, example, if there's something called the Medical Act and that says that Billy Bob can make a declaration that there, there's a public emergency and therefore people uh, can have some rights taken away from them, uh, besides it has to be proportional and uh, whatever for the actual uh, so-called emergency, then the person can only make directions uh, within the scope of that legislation and of course the legislation if it says that people can be deprived of uh, crossing a state border without a border pass etc uh, then that legislation is subject to the commonwealth constitution which applies to all levels of government in australia and every person in australia uh, as it says in the preamble and also there's a number of uh, sections that do only apply to the Commonwealth or whatever, but uh, Section 51 is not one of them, uh, nor is Section, uh, and that's a very broad statement, but uh, say Section 51, subsection 23, uh, does not say that it's only for the Commonwealth Government as an example. Uh, but Section 92 of the Constitution uh, applies to all levels of government, even within the uh, Constitution, without using, uh, needing to use Section 109 about inconsistencies of laws between Commonwealth and uh, state governments, because it's a restriction on the power of the states in itself anyway. So, just trying to quickly check some more things. Uh, but anyway, I think that it would be awesome if people around the world would protest these anti-freedom laws. Uh, you have places like Sweden where they don't even have these restrictions. 
yet they have the same uh, death rate and infection rate as Denmark that apparently has very strict restrictions and you get these videos going around with a young lady saying how awesome Denmark is, I think it was Denmark, uh, that they made 10 million masks at home on their sewing machines and that's why no one's sick there. Yet uh, proportionally, as in uh, Denmark has about 5 million people, uh, Sweden has about 10 million people, that the infections and death rate is approximately double, uh, not the rate, sorry, the numbers is approximately double uh, in Sweden than it is in Denmark, therefore it has the same rate. Uh, whether you wear ma all these masks or you don't wear the mask, whether you have a lockdown or not. And as I said before, there's a two-week incubation period for uh, the coronavirus. So the decline in infections has nothing to do with the lockdown because the lockdown has not even lasted two weeks. And therefore, it should have been uh, increasing exponentially until two weeks after the lockdown, then start slowing and then go down. Uh, so, uh, Barbara just points out that an uh, 80 year old person was fined $1,000 to stop uh, to rest at a uh, park bench 